Welcome to the St. John Airport's second virtual annual general meeting. My name is Mark Bettle, and I'm the chair of the St. John Airport's Board of Directors. In the next 45 minutes, you'll hear about the St. John Airport's recent activities and finances. I'll introduce you to the Airport's Board of Directors and our new interim president and CEO. Our CEO will provide an overview of the airport's recent activities and will give us a candid update on the airport's current situation as it relates to COVID-19. And you'll hear about the airport's finances from our auditors. At the end of the presentation, we'll do a Q&A to answer some of your questions. The St. John Airport is proud to have a hardworking and resourceful board of directors with a broad skill set and representation from across our catchment area. There are currently 13 members on the board, including myself. They are Mark Battle, I am the chair, retired from JD Irving Limited, nominated by the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce. Vice Chair is Sue Harley, retired from Bell, Bell Alliant, nominated by Transport Canada. Our secretary is Susan Layton, WorkSafe NB, nominated by St. John Airport, Inc. Our treasurer is Shiloh Boucher, YMCA of Greater St. John, nominated by Funday Regional Services Commission. Andrew McGilvery, retired Gailey Foods, nominated by St. John Airport, Inc. Kevin Scott, Irving Oil, nominated by City of St. John. Dwayne Stoddard, Cook, Inc., nominated by St. John Airport, Inc. Key, retired St. John Firefighters, nominated by St. John and District Labor Council. Paulette Hicks, Envision St. John, the Regional Growth Agency, nominated by the City of St. John. Karen Chandler, Architects Association of NB, nominated by Regional Services Commission, Region 8. John Wheatley, John B. Wheatley and Associates, nominated by Economic Development Greater St. John, which is now Envision St. John. Nancy Creamer Irvin, TD Waterhouse, nominated by Transport Canada. Peter Galton, J.K. Whitaker and Associates, nominated by the province of New Brunswick. And I'd like to provide a warm welcome this year to Peter, who joined our board in October. The St. George Airport has six committees of the board. Each committee focuses on a specific area that's essential to the operation of the airport. The committees vary in size and how often they meet. However, each committee reviews current activities, processes and policies and makes recommendations for future improvements. We have the Finance, Audit and Investment Committee. Our chair is Shiloh Boucher. The Governance Committee, our chair is Susan Layton. Facilities and Air Service Committee, our chair is Andrew McGilvery. Our Human Resource, Resources Committee, our chair is Kevin Scott. And our Executive Committee, I am the chair of that. We also have an Airport Community Consultative Committee. Our chair is Greg Herlihy. This committee provides an opportunity for dialogue between the St. John Airport and the public. It's intended to demonstrate YSJ's commitment to transparency with local community stakeholders potentially affected by the activity of the St. John Airport. The committee shares and discusses issues relating to the ongoing operation and future plans of the St. John Airport, such as growth plans, flight path changes, or noise issues, to name a few, and allow the airport's management team to hear community concerns expressed in a public forum and to take action as agreed and considered appropriate. The Airport Community Consultative Committee meets twice a year, and we encourage the general public to attend these meetings. This year's ACCC will take place later this spring and will be a virtual event due to COVID-19. We'll announce the next meeting date on the airport social media once it has been confirmed. If you would like to learn more about the airport's committees, I encourage you to visit our website at stjohnairport.com. Since 2016, Derek Stanford has been St. John Airport's President and Chief Executive Officer. He stepped down from this role effective March 10th to pursue a new opportunity. For almost five years, Derek was a dedicated ambassador of the St. John Airport. Under his leadership, the airport experienced record-breaking passenger growth, major capital improvements, enhancements to passenger experience, as well as the attraction of new airline carriers, Porter Airlines and Flair Airlines. 
On behalf of everyone at the St. John Airport, I'd like to thank Derek for his significant contributions and we wish him all the best. Greg Herlihy became the interim CEO of the St. John Airport effective March 11th. His role is to provide the strategic vision and direction of the airport until a permanent CEO is selected. Greg has been the airport's director of finance and administration since July the 4th, 2017. Greg was instrumental in securing the funding and financing of our runway modernization project and has been involved extensively in our growth efforts to attract new airline partners and routes. He has worked hard to develop positive relationships with the airport's key stakeholders in government, the media, our airline partners, YSJ tenants, our employees, and the St. John business community. Greg has demonstrated leadership in this role, both in the success we showed pre-pandemic and in guiding us through the financial pressures brought on by COVID-19. I'm pleased to introduce Greg Herlihy. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everyone. The St. John Airport has a talented group of people on our management team. Jacques Fournier is our Director of Business Development. Jacques is, is, is responsible for increasing our capacity, passenger traffic, and revenues. That's just another way of saying he's responsible for attracting new airline partners by increasing the number of passengers who fly out of the St. John Airport. Cindy Thorne is our Director of Operations. Cindy is responsible for YSJ's compliance to all regulatory, re regulatory requirements and legislation. And finally, D Brian Wiggins is our Director of Engineering, Facilities and Capital Project Projects. Brian's responsible for maintaining the airport facility anticipating the airport's future needs and aligning the capital improvement development and implementation to optimize the customer experience for our passengers, airlines, and tenants. Our management team has a wealth of experience and accomplishments in business, and they have all been invaluable to YSJ as we have worked tire tirelessly to navigate the uncharted territory that has resulted from the pandemic. St. John Airport has an important role to play in our community's post-pandemic recovery. YSJ connects the greater St. John region to the rest of Canada and the world. We know our ability, our ability to facilitate travel to and from our region has a direct positive impact on the recovery of business, tourism, and population growth and retention. Pre-COVID, the St. John Airport offered 18 daily flights to and from Toronto, Halifax, Montreal and Ottawa, served by Air Canada and Porter Airlines, plus seasonal sun vacation destinations by Sunwing Airlines. The airport's economic impact has been estimated at 68.7 million annually, with more than 400 jobs created directly and indirectly. In addition, the airfield modernization project that we completed in 2019 translated into an additional 21 million in economic impact for the greater St. John region. So when looking at 2019 alone, YSJ had an economic impact estimated at more than $90 million with more than 650 jobs created directly and indirectly. YSJ's growth will help drive the continued economic growth of our region. We have worked along with airports across the country advocating for funding to help us recover from the pandemic and put us in a position to help fuel the economic recovery. The funding programs announced by the federal government in the 2020 fall economic statement was a good start for the aviation sector, including our airport. It reflects the importance the federal government places on the entire travel industry and sustaining it for future service and growth. Yesterday, we received some very good news when the government provided details on some of the programs previously announced. The airport relief fund is expected to provide our airport with approximately $1.1 million in recognition of the significant financial impact we have experienced and are still experiencing. We have also been approved for funding in the amount of $565,000 from the Airport Capital Assistance Program, ACAP, to assist us in the completion of two capital projects related to improving and maintain, maintaining the safety of our airfield. We are very pleased to see the ACAP initiative 
funding rollout. It should be noted that our airport was not previously eligible to participate in this program and that this, only, that this is only now possible through new pandemic relief efforts put in place by Transport Canada. The federal government has also committed $40 million of support for Atlantic Canada's regional airports through its Regional Air Transportation Initiative. We have applied for funding from this program and hope to hear in the near future on the results of this application. We would like to thank Transport Canada for their efforts and support during this difficult time period. Thank you also goes out to Minister of Transport Omar al Khabra and our MP Wayne Long for their work in this area and for the rollout of these programs. 2020 was a grueling year for the aviation industry. With the global pandemic came travel restrictions. And by mid-March, all three of our airline partners, Air Canada, Porter Airlines and Sunwing had announced COVID-19 related flight suspensions. Beginning on April 1st of 2020, there were no commercial flights arriving or departing from YSJ. Our team worked tire tirelessly to adapt to a constantly changing situation with the goal of resuming air travel while keeping health and safety a top priority for travelers, our employees, and the late larger St. John community. The commercial flight suspens suspensions had a significant impact to our revenues. In April, we moved quickly to stem controllable spending and reduce operating costs as much as possible while maintaining all safety protocols and observing federal regulations. We deferred more than $5 million in capital projects. We cut expenses by more than $1.3 million on an annualized basis and utilized available government support programs. Unfortunately, those measures were not enough. In July, we took the difficult step of adjusting our workforce. In the spring of 2020, we never could have imagined that commercial flight suspensions would last essentially for the remainder of the year. There was a spark of hope in mid-June when Air Canada returned to YSJ, offering one daily non-stop flight between St. John and Montreal. But in early December, Air Canada announced that they would be reducing service across the entire Atlantic region, effective January 11, 2021. For us, that meant the indefinite suspension of all commercial flights in and out of the St. John airport. Even with all commercial flights stopped, our runways always remained open 24 seven to provide essential services to medevac flights and for the use of private operators, including the national and global, en global enterprises headquartered in St. John. Why is, YSJ is on course for a slow and steady recovery. The travel restrictions and flight suspensions throughout most of 2020 had a significant negative impact to YSJ's revenues. Fortunately, the airport has been fiscally prudent and we are, we are in a financial position to weather a temporary downturn. Our board of directors and the YSJ management team continue to work on recovery strategies with the goal of resuming air travel. We continue to have good relationships with our existing airline partners, Air Canada, Porter, and Sunwing. And they have all indicated that flight service is expected to return to YSJ. Air Canada is scheduled to resume, resume flight, flight service on June 30th of, 20, of this year. Porter Airlines scheduled to resume flight service on June 21st. And Sunwing Airlines has announced that they will resume flight service for international sun vacations in February of 2022. Of course, all these dates uh, are subject to change and demand, but uh, that's a very encouraging sign. Passenger demand will ultimately determine how quickly service will return and when YSJ will rebound, will rebound to pre-pandemic levels. We believe that people will choose to fly again when travel restrictions are lifted and when they feel it is safe to do so as a, as a result of widespread vaccinations. We are truly grateful for the support our community has historically shown us by choosing to book flights out of YSJ. And airline carriers take notice. 
It's a significant risk and investment for any new airline to come to St. John. So we build business cases to attract them by demonstrating how their investment in our city can increase their profitability. In addition, the airport often reduces fees or provides other monetary, uh, monetary incentives to attract new airlines, but success is what ultimately attracts success. What this means is that when our airline partners are successful at YSJ, they'll offer more flights out of YSJ, or they might offer new destinations. And when other airlines see flights are successful here, it makes it more likely that we'll be able to attract them as well. Flair Airlines, very excited about this one. Flair Airlines selected St. John as their exclusive New Brunswick destination. Flair will bring an ultra low cost option with rates starting as low as $49 that will allow St. John travelers to fly to more places than ever before. The inaugural Flair Airlines flight, flight from the St. John Airport to Toronto Pearson Airport was, origi was originally scheduled for June 2020, but the launch was postponed due, the, due to the pandemic. We're delighted that Flair Airlines is scheduled to begin operation at YSJ on July 2nd this, uh, this year. And when Flair and our other airline partners are back in the skies, we encourage you to keep flying out of YSJ because success attracts success. YSJ also welcomes established regional carrier PAL Airlines to St. John. PAL Airlines will be offering a direct flight from St. John to Halifax. The inaugural PAL, PAL Airlines flight from YSJ to Halifax will be on August 2nd. Halifax is an important destination for St. John business and leisure travelers, and we're delighted that PAL Airlines is connecting our two cities. The direct Halifax St. John uh, flights will be offered five times per week and operated with a 37 seat Dash 8 aircraft. If the service is well used by St. John travelers, more routes to other Canadian destinations may follow. Flights are now available for online booking at palairlines.ca for travel beginning August 2nd. When travel resumes, YSJ is determined to emerge better than ever before. The St. John Airport is committed to continually enhancing the passenger experience. New renovations to the YSJ market and duty-free area allow guests to enjoy a more inviting layout and an improved passenger experience, including alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, snacks, and other refreshments in the departure area post-security. Improved, con improved convenience has also been provided in the long-term parking area. YSJ now offers the convenience of hotspot parking in both the long and short-term parking lots. YSJ is the first airport in Canada to install a U-Pod for business travelers. A U-Pod is a private mobile workstation that has been installed on the terminal and allows business travelers to stay productive while on the go. The St. John, partner, John Airport partnered with U-Station, an Atlantic Can Canadian startup, to install the workstation, the first of three locations to test the innovative U-Pod concept. Safety and security continues to be the airport's first priority. With the largest capital project in the airport's history newly completed at the end of 2019, our airfield is now one of the most modern and safest in the country. YSJ is the first Canadian airport in our size category to have RISAs, in other words, runway end safety areas. Reducing the risk of damage to, air, of damage to airplanes in the event of an undershoot, overshoot, or excursion from the runway. YSJ is the third airport in Atlantic Canada to have centerline lighting on the primary one runway to improve accessibility for arriving and departing aircraft. Now arriving and departing from St. John is more attractive to our current airline partners and will help us attract new airlines in the future. YSJ is poised and ready for the next 20 years of growth. The St. John Airport was one of the first airports in New Brunswick to receive global recognition for its health and safety measures implemented in response to COVID-19 from the Airports Council International, ACI. We worked hard 
to receive this global health accreditation. Many changes have been implemented with have been, have been implemented within the airport terminal to ensure the health and safety of our passengers, airport employees, and tenants. To give you a glimpse of what you can expect on your next trip to YSJ, we've prepared this brief video. And I'm excited to welcome you back to your HR airport. We understand that there are some questions we have in places that we I'm not sure if that video went out there, but what I can tell you is that that video will be on our website and the traveling public can rest assured that the St. John Airport is at the top of its game for health and safety now and in the future. Looking, at, looking ahead, the future remains unpredictable. Before COVID, we were forecasting over 500,000 passengers would fly through YSJ by 2025, but that has changed. In the next two years, 21 and 22, we anticipate YSJ's passenger growth will make a slow and steady recovery. The passenger traffic is not expected to return to pre-COVID 2019 levels until 2025. Passenger demand, widespread vaccinations, and the removal of travel restrictions, restri restrictions will ultimately determine how slow or swift YSJ's recovery will be. Despite economic uncertainty and forecasts that, that airport economic recovery and growth will be slow, I am confident about the St. John Airport's future. The St. John market continues to be a very attractive one to our airline partners. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our board management team, staff, and community for their continued support as we strive to create an even better air airport in the years ahead. On the financial side, the RBC Royal Bank continues to be banker of record and the financial institution for investments for the St. John Airport, Inc. The Bank of Montreal is our, is our lender of record and Teed Saunders Doyle continues to be the auditors for the airport. Andrew Logan is a partner at Teed Saunders Doyle. Born and raised in St. John, he's a CPA with more than 30 years of experience helping small and medium-sized businesses. Please welcome Andrew Logan to pre present the airport's financial report. Thank you, Greg. You're gonna have to change that 30 years of experience to start to make me feel old. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, allowing me to speak today on the finances for the airport. Um, as Greg indicated, uh, the airport is in good financial standing at the end of 2020, uh, despite all the interruptions that the pandemic has caused. The measures of a strong uh, organization uh, are, are found on the balance sheet. And it, it was, as we note here in the slide, the airport has landed with $11 million in accumulated surplus at the end of 2020. 
and still remains in a st strong liquid position with over $5 million in cash and investments on hand. During 2020, there was an additional capital investment of $2.3 million in the infrastructure, bringing the total uh, at the end of December to $26.4 million. The bulk of that, of course, is represented by the uh, runway refurbishment project. Uh, there was an additional $661,000 received in 2020 towards that project, uh, bringing the grand total of external funding to $12.2 million of that project. The airport has $9.2 million in debt on the balance sheet at the end of 2020, uh, with still an additional $5 million in borrowing capacity available under current uh, existing credit facilities. Another positive note uh, is that the defined benefit pension plan has a accumulated asset position of $1.3 million at the end of 2020. So all in all, uh, a strong balance sheet uh, despite the pandemic influence. In terms of operating results, uh, as expected, uh, and as, the, uh, as Greg alluded to, revenue uh, dropped by $4.9 million last year, representing a 71% decrease um, obviously, lower passenger volume trickles through long-term parking, uh, concession sales, and passenger facility fees having an impact. The airport did respond accordingly, as mentioned previously, and was able to reduce non-essential operating expenditures by almost $1.4 million. That accompanied with federal uh, COVID support funding, primarily the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy of $685,000, helped reduce the operating loss uh, and, and negative cash flow to, to 1.9 million. During the year, uh, the airport funded $1.7 million of capital expenditures uh, through debt, reserves, and operational income. You can see that on the chart below. And I think one of the comments that, that I wanted to make on this is that over the years, the airport has had very strong operating results and has allowed them to uh, weather this storm uh, quite easily uh, I shouldn't say easily, but with, with good positive results. It's taken a lot of hard decisions and hard work, but uh, at the end of 2020, the airport remains in good shape. From an audit perspective, um, we're publishing a clean audit opinion again this year. Uh, our audit work takes place in late January and early February. Uh, we meet with the board and uh, have the statements approved. Just a couple of points that I'd like to make uh, make here is that uh, the airport continues to have a very strong control environment, uh, a very strong attitude towards internal controls at the corporate level, and is always looking to improve uh, and make their control systems work better to safeguard the assets of the airport. There's strong governance evident. Um, the board is uh, very diverse with a broad range of experience, lots of good finance people on the board, uh, a strong audit committee, and we note um, excellent reporting um, and an excellent um, um, review of those reports on a very frequent basis. I think that's uh, all I have in terms of uh, that report. I'll pass the uh, uh, meeting back to Mark. Thank you, Andrew. 2020 has been the most challenging year in the St. John Airport's history and for the aviation industry as a whole. The COVID-19 pandemic and the related travel restrictions and flight suspensions that follow have tested us all on a daily basis. I am proud of our team who worked resolutely amidst fluctuating circumstances and uncertainty with the primary goal of resuming air travel while keeping health and safety a top priority for everyone. Around the world, airlines and airports have reacted to the unprecedented decline in global traffic travel as a result of the pandemic. The commercial flight suspensions by our airline partners were very disappointing, but we understood that they were business decisions that had to be made. The commercial flight suspensions have had a significant impact on YSJ's revenues. Fortunately, the airport has been fiscally prudent and we are in a position to weather a temporary downturn. During these trying times, it has been gratifying to experience the outpouring of support for our airport from political and community leaders local business and economic development organizations, and the general public. They recognize that the St. John Airport has an important role to play in our community's post-pandemic recovery. And we are starting to see some encouraging signs that clear skies are ahead. As Greg mentioned earlier, we continue to have good relationships with our airline partners, Air Canada, Porter, and Sunwing. 
all expected to resume flight service at YSJ. And even more encouraging, new airline partners, Flair Airlines and PAL Airlines have added St. John as a destination. The St. John Airport will continue to work closely with our colleagues in Moncton, Fredericton and Bathurst to ensure we have a unified airport voice to deal, to detail our challenges and to articulate our needs to governments going forward. No one is sure what tomorrow will bring for the aviation sector and the communities our airports serve, but we do know that it will take a team effort to restore the aviation sector in New Brunswick. We are now going to answer questions you have submitted to us in advance of today's meeting. Please feel free to ask us questions via Facebook, via Facebook or by email, and we will ensure we follow up after this meeting with a response. Thank you, Mark. My name is Jacques Fournier. I'm the Director of Commercial Development. And uh, prior to the AGM, we have posted or sent emails asking um, the public to send questions in, and a lot of the questions were, were the same. So we picked the eight most relevant to uh, what we want to move forward. So the first question is going to be directed to Mark, uh, and Greg will also answer uh, some of those questions. So Mark, when will flights return to YSJ? What are the key criteria for this to happen? And what are your expectations on the flight schedule returning to pre-pandemic levels? Thank you, Jacques. Our airline partners have all filed and advertised their schedules as we discussed earlier in the meeting. I think we all understand and fully support that the startup depends significantly on the vaccination rates across the country and advice from public health. The demand for travel from the public and how comfortable they are in moving around the country is a key determinant in the speed at which airlines add flights and capacity at our airport. The common view is that leisure travel visiting friends and family will return relatively quickly while business travel will lag. Our overall projections are that it will be four or five years before we return to 2019 passenger levels. And this is consistent with the industry outlook. Having said that, we fully expect to have good regular schedule for 2022 that connects us with Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Halifax, and some destinations. When people are comfortable, we encourage them to look at the offerings from YSJ. Success breeds success, and airlines will react to strong bookings. Thank you, Mark. Second question is directly to Greg. Greg, can you currently book travel for YSJ? Yes, you can definitely book travel in, in and out of YSJ. You can book directly on the airline's company website. You can call your travel agent. You can also look on travel websites like Travelocity and Expedia. Um, no, important to note that uh, currently airlines are very flexible when it comes to cancellations and changes if your plans should be altered. And just to, just to reiterate what we've uh, said earlier, from St. John, the airlines, various airlines have schedules uh, starting as follows. Air Canada on June 30th, Flair July 2nd, Her PAL Airlines August 2nd, Porter June 21st, and Sunwing February 5th uh, of 2022. Thank you, Greg. Very encouraging. Uh, Mark, what is the financial outlook for YHJ uh, for 2021 and beyond? And also, with the substantial losses as a result of the pandemic, will you be in a financial position to benefit from the recovery? Thank you, Jacques. Um, good question. This year will certainly be another challenging year for our airport. We are looking at a very similar year in 20, to 2020, with a forecast of operating cash flows of about negative $1.8 million. Airports have a significant fixed cost component that is necessary to keep the runways open, to make things safe and secure, and to comply with regulations. 95% of our revenue is based upon passenger traffic, so it's not difficult to see the challenge. Having said that, I am incredibly proud of how all of our staff have risen to the challenge of managing expenses as closely as possible and making determinations of the capital improvements that we can defer. Our board and management team have long prided themselves on being fiscally prudent, and we are in a good position to recover. We have maintained our liquidity through cutting costs and capital and have available sources of credit with our lending partners should we require it. We're also working closely with the government on announced support programs and continue to leverage available programs like the Canadian Emergency Wage, wage Subsidy. 
Our five-year forecast shows that we will be able to invest capital as needed and be able to maintain debt levels at a manageable level longer term. While there are a lot of moving parts, we have a plan that we believe works and allows us to provide the service and travel experience that our passengers have come to expect. Thank you, Mark. Greg, what safety measures have been put into place as a result of COVID-19 and how will you ensure they are maintained? Thanks, Jacques. Um, as we mentioned in the presentation, you know, we're, we're very proud that we achieved the, the, air, the airport health accreditation through the Airports Council International. I mean, this, this accreditation deals specifically with cleaning and sanitation, passenger screening and area restrictions related to preventing the spread of COVID-19. Um, uh, at the same time, the airport maintains an operational plan that's compliant with WorkSafe New Brunswick and New Brunswick Public Health. We continuously, we continuously self-assess our measures and constantly measure the evolving guidance and YSJ is quick to adapt to implement procedures. I guess in particular, um, we, we, we're, we'll take special note of this year of uh, assessing, always assessing and reassessing our, our procedures against the uh, airport health, health accreditation standards. It's a, it's a priority for us um, this year and, and go forward. Thank you, Greg. Mark. What is your view on the support package provided to Air Canada? We're, we're pleased with the agreement and it's an encouraging sign of recovery. It's a sign of the government of Canada's commitment to the air sector and its value to the Canadian economy, particularly as it relates to the importance of regional connectivity. We continue to look to the government for a plan on a safe travel restart framework. Thank you, Mark. Greg, you have had the to the first capital projects due to the pandemic. What are the capital projects that you expect to complete in 2021 and in the next few years? Thanks, Jacques. Um, in 2021, uh, we will continue to seek to strike a balance between conserving our capital and executing projects for necessary uh, airfield uh, refits. Um, in, tw in, in 21, and related to the ACAP uh, assistance we talked about earlier, um, some of these plans include improved airport lighting and replacement of aging air airfield lighting circuits. Um, major efforts in the upcoming years will focus on our water and sewer infrastructure, including a waste a replacement wastewater treatment plant and an upgrade to our water distribution infrastructure. Thank you, Greg. In prior years, we have been supporters of many community organizations, events, and activities. This has been a very limited, this has been very limited during the pandemic. What is your view on how this would play out for 2021 and the future years? Yes, we've long been active in the community supporting events like our Community Day and Runway Day, uh, Runway Run, Port Days, Chamber Events, etc. And our organizations, at the St. John Regional and supporting organizations such as the St. John Regional Hospital Foundation, Junior Treatment, the Boys and Girls Club, among others. We've continued to spotlight local artists in the community with our Art in the Airport program. While conditions did not allow for this community engagement over the last year, we remain enthusiastically committed to being a good corporate citizen in our community. We plan to be back to hosting events in 2022, and we will look for opportunities to support groups financially and or with volunteer time when we can. Thank you, Mark. Greg, last question. Powell Airlines has announced a flight to Halifax starting August 2nd, 2021. What can you tell us regarding the potential for connecting flights out in and out of Halifax? Well, first of all, what I'd say is that uh, we're, we're extremely pleased that Powell will offer the, the daily flight uh, to, to Halifax. I mean, Halifax, as we said, it's, it's a very important destination uh, for us historically, and we expect it will be uh, again in the future. It also represents a hub where passengers have many options of carriers and routes to connect with the rest, rest of Canada and the world. What I can tell you is that PAL is certainly aware of the importance of this connection piece and are making efforts to, opti to optimize the network for convenience of passengers. So uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned on that one. Thank you. So thank you for those questions. I encourage everyone to read our 2020 annual report now available on our website. 
I'd like to thank our board of directors, our interim CEO, Greg Herlihy, the management team and the entire YSJ staff for their hard work and dedication during this most unusual and challenging year. I'd especially like to thank this community for your continued support as we strive to build back an even better airport in the years ahead. Please don't hesitate to contact us with your questions, comments, or ideas to help us improve the St. John Airport. It is your airport and we encourage you to continue to use it. The St. John Airport will be here to welcome back our passengers when it's safe to do so and you, when you're ready to fly again. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.